Welcome back everyone, this is Matt Mastat Sportsman. Today's video, uh, long awaited, I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of uh, my boat. So just to give you a little background, uh, this boat here has been, sorry, been in the family for, I don't know, probably close to 30 years now. Uh, I know my dad and brother had it, started back in the early 90s. So uh, what we got here, it's a 1970 Starcraft. Uh, it's aluminum obviously, 16 foot. And it is a super sport. So, original trailer, uh, as far as I know, it's a 1970 Spartan trailer. Um, this is not the original color. Uh, this was painted in 1995. My dad painted it. So, this is a 26 year old paint job. And so, it's got some chips and nicks and scratches all over it, which is fine. I've done a few touch ups to it. And if you do want to see what the original color was, the bottom of the hull here, that green, that is the OG color. All right. So kind of moving on down. A couple things that I've done to it so far since uh, taking possession of the boat. Uh, basically, my brother and father gifted it to me back in 2019. Um, new rims and tires and also have a new spare for it as well. But uh, I don't take very good care of it cleaning up the wind, the, the, wind, the wheels, so could care less about that as long as they're greased up on the bearing buddies, I'm happy. Uh, the two bump boards underneath, I replaced those last year with some treated two by fours and uh, some Thompson's water seal and put some new uh, bunk carpeting on there. And I also put these on, I think it was early last year, these side bunk rails. So it makes uh, makes putting the boat back on the trailer much much easier, especially if you're if you're out by yourself. All right, now around to the back of the boat here, um, we have retractable transom tie downs. Those make it quite a bit easier and more efficient. Uh, we have the transom saver here for the motor and the motor. The power plant, it's a 1978 Evinrude, 70 horsepower. Uh, about two weeks ago or so, I put a little bit of time and effort into getting this sucker cleaned up and painted. Uh, these are not original colors, but uh, they work. So I didn't take as much time with the lower, even though it looks pretty good still. But uh, the engine cover, I took that off, took some time, sanded it down. I had uh, ordered a decal kit for it. So we've got the decal kit on, looks pretty good. So it makes it look much better than what it was. Uh, for the prop right now, I'm running a, what is it, 13 and 3 quarters by 15 inch prop. The original prop, I think, was a 13 and 1 quarter by 17. So this prop here gives you a little bit better hole shot, a little bit more torque, uh, but you do lose about one to two miles per hour. So this is getting me 29, 30 miles per hour, or the other one getting me 30, 30 miles, somewhere in there. All right, we are inside the boat finally. So the setup of this boat, it's pretty much open. It's an open bow. Um, most of these older boats have these little sliders in the back. So in the back, this is where the gas tank is. That's uh, an original OMC Johnson a metal six gallon gas can. I normally just run one of these. If we do plan on going out onto the lake or making some longer runs, then uh, I'll either take an extra one of those or just grab an extra five gallon gas can to go with me. So for our tackle storage, we have three bags. This is Ann's bag here. These are my two. We have, she has four rods over here on her side, the port side, all spinning rods. And we have, Dock line, we have probably, I don't know, 75 or 100 feet of blue rope with one of those big old earth magnets on there. So when we do get our baits caught up or something like that, we do have a little bit of a chance of getting them back sometimes. Uh, we have an oar, some water, and just over here to the right, we get a good picture of the seat. And we have a fire extinguisher drink holder, and it may be a little bit tough because we don't have the light so quite right for this angle. But we have two battery boxes down there. Those are 
27 series AGM batteries. Uh, those are the Walmart specials, the Everstarts. And uh, they're cheap and they actually work pretty well. Over on this side, behind this slider, we have a car wash bucket. You know what that's for, right? Uh, that is the onboard laboratory. So what we end up doing is uh, is using that, the front little uh, open area at the bow. Yep, right up there. We'll just throw the bucket up front, right where the uh, trolling motor pedal is. And we we use that for uh, our restroom facilities. So when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> so at the back of the boat, I do have two rod holders. These guys here. They just kind of slide down and in. You can turn them, adjust them, and then lock them in place. So if we're going to do some trolling or perch fishing or something like that, we have that option. Uh, this backboard here, my dad put this on years ago. Uh, so there are a couple of downrigger mounts here. I do have two, uh, two downrigger, walker downriggers upstairs here in the garage. So if we do want to go out and do some walleye trolling or Lake Ontario for some king salmon, something like that, we do have options for that. I keep my rods over here on the starboard side, so I think I got five rods in here right now. That's um, that's normally about what I carry. Usually, only carry what I know that I'm going to need. So usually during more toward the summer, I'll probably switch up what I have here, just kind of tailored to whatever the fish are doing. But uh, I think I got two two spinning rods and three bait casters at the moment. Up front at the cockpit here. We have the, I believe this is original, this is a, an old Sears and Robux speedometer. Pretty sweet. And uh, I added the RPM gauge. Over here we have the bilge pump, switch, nav lights, and the horn. And over here is my drink holder, cigarette lighter adapter, and the uh, controls here. It's an OMC. And I'm not sure, I don't think this was original to the boat. I think this is, a, I think it's probably a 78 to go along with the same year as the motor. But uh, this guy's old enough that it doesn't have a engine cutoff or a dead man switch. And then underneath the footwell here, I have my cranking battery. And that doubles as my electronics battery. So that's, that's running uh, cranking power and running all three of the electronics I got going on in here. All right. So the console electronics, uh, I'm running a Hummingbird Helix 10. This is a G3N, so it's third generation networking model. So I do have this network to the Hummingbird Helix 7 up front. This is a mega side and mega down imaging. Um, thanks to the most recent stimulus uh, money we got, that $1,400, that pretty much went into this. And uh, so far it's been pretty, pretty nice. Definitely nice going. Uh, upgrading from a 7 to a 10 inch makes a world of difference. And we will go up front and show you up front. Alright, so one of the one of the few things that I did in the boat uh, shortly after I got it, uh, the floor in here, because the boat had kind of sat idle outside, just tarped up for seven or eight years. Uh, I ended up ripping all the floor out, and uh, the floor was at least half all rotted out. I think it was like half an inch or so plywood so that all got ripped out um, I did put in three quarter inch marine grade plywood and uh, wrapped it in vinyl after um, coating it multiple times with some uh, Thompson's water seal so it's it should should hold up for many many years uh, also the seating up here I put new vinyl on it there's new foam and this is also using some of that leftover uh, marine grade plywood three quarter inch and underneath is basically some of the only storage other than the back of the boat you know, have the best lighting in here uh, down inside there uh, I keep my throwable here and then I also have my um, Pro Mariner three bank charger it's a uh, Pro Sport 20 plus which is like I said three bank 20 amps so that keeps all three of the batteries charged up ready to go on uh, this side over here side it's, most, it's usually only two of us in here so I only carry two life jackets if we have more people then I'll add a couple more we have an anchor we have an anchor rope and uh, two uh, dock bumpers over here on the starboard side 
a bunch more stuff over here. There's an extra Plano 3700, uh, just some A-rigs, blade baits, stuff like that in there. First aid kit, should always have a first aid kit. You'll use this much more than you realize. And uh, a couple extra things that I've added to it is uh, some sutures and some quick clot. Uh, a lot of times when you're on the water, uh, you could be 30 minutes, an hour, even more away from a hospital. So if there is something catastrophic, you need something to stop the blood. Uh, i got a six cents bag here with a bunch of soft plastics. It's not all of them, but what I normally use. So inside I have a bunch of uh, Berkeley Maxins. I got D-worms, hit worms, flat worms, you name it, it's in there. Gary Yamamoto Senkos, I'm a huge fan of them. And uh, six cents swim baits, gotta have those too. I got a bag with a bunch of flares on it. I have old flares and I have newer flares. I always keep the old ones just in case. Uh, there's a safety flag in there too. Some extra dock line. I have my spare prop in here. That is the 13 and a quarter by 17. And these are uh, waterproof bins. So I have extra spark plugs, sockets, wrenches, prop wrench, some uh, Starbright adhesive, and an extra drain plug. I always have an extra drain plug. My registration, all that stuff, boat paperwork. Another one here, toilet paper, extra AAA batteries for the Minn Kota remote, duct tape, electrical tape, and a uh, starting cord. So if I do have uh, battery issues and I don't feel like unhooking everything to hook them up to the trolling motor batteries to get the main motor started, I can pull the engine cover and use the uh, rope pull to get her started up. Some wipes. And we have a little small craftsman toolbox there. Some waters, starting fluid and uh, some two-cycle uh, oil for the uh, fuel, just in case. So up front, um, we have the two, two graphs up here. This is that original Helix 7 side imaging. Now this one is networked to the console unit. So this is actually showing the, what's showing off of the rear transducer. Uh, the Humminbird 581i there to the right, that is uh, an old unit that my father had just given me, pretty much with the boat. And that transducer I do run off of the front. Um, I don't have that transducer mounted to the trolling motor. I actually have it on this two hickey here. So I'll just... Normally the trolling motor is down when I set this up. But uh, this is from fishingspecialties.com. This is an aluminum adjustable rod. And there is a mounting base right here. It's like a polymer plastic. So that just slides down in here. It locks into place. This is adjustable, so that uh, sonar unit is, I don't know, probably about a foot and a half below the, uh, the water line. And it uh, works out pretty well. That was the best I could come up with to uh, run a front transducer. The Minn Kota up front here, that is, uh, I got that in 2019, so it's the, the newer version of it. And that is 24 volt, uh, 80 foot pound, so it's got plenty of thrust for this light boat. And uh, it also is a iPilot model. It's not the iPilot link. I didn't want the link, uh, but the iPilot gives you that spot lock, and the spot lock feature to it is absolutely wonderful. No matter if you're shallow water, deep water, it's just going to keep you right in place with this little uh, Minn Kota puck here. That's kind of your GPS type receiver. So when you spot lock, it keeps this little puck here within a five foot radius. But uh, that is it for my boat tour. Um, let me know what you think. Um, one other thing I want to talk about briefly. Uh, I know in the past some of our videos with Scott have been joking around kind of talking about getting a new boat. Um, I've been thinking about it a little bit more. Sure, I'd love a new boat. Everybody would like a new boat. But um, when it comes down to it, do I think a new boat's going to help me catch more fish? I don't think so. Um, sure, it'd be fancy driving around, pulling a new boat, whatever, it looks shiny on the water with all the glitters and all that. But uh, it, it would help, a newer boat would probably help me get into some shallower areas where the deeper V on this boat isn't going to get me. And a newer boat's probably going to have a little bit more pep to it. So you're going to get where you want to go quicker, but is it, in the end, is it going to make me catch more fish or be a better fisherman? I don't think so. So getting a new boat for this year, I'm not going to say it's not in the cards, but uh, it's not a priority at this time. So maybe next year. We'll see. But uh, 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like if you like it. And uh, come back, watch some more of our videos. Appreciate it. This is Matt with Stout Sportsman. I'm out.